In this short video, I'm going to show you how to produce some fascinating effects using old lens filters and card cutouts. One of the effects is the waterfall, or slit effect, I described in a video on bouquet. People have been asking me how I produced it, so I'm going to demonstrate it here, along with some other effects. It all began when I was wondering what to do with the lens filters I'd collected over the years. They'd been attached to old lenses I'd bought. I still use some of the filters, such as UV or ND filters, but I was left with a number of spares. So I started to experiment with sticking different shapes onto the filters to produce effects similar to a lens's diaphragm, and here are some of the results. Now I'm lucky enough to have access to a specialist printer that can print shapes directly onto the filters, and I've used this for one or two more complicated shapes, like the Starburst, and you can also search the internet for pre-shaped frames. However, I'm going to show you a much easier and cheaper way to achieve the same result. And it's a good approach because you're not going to be sticking things permanently onto the filter. And you can reuse the same filter for different shapes. If you don't have any old filters lying around, you can always buy a cheap, new, clear filter to fit your chosen lens. What you'll need is a piece of card. It should be matte black. If you only have white card, you can always paint it black on the side that faces the sensor. And then you'll need a pencil, scissors, a ruler, a sharp knife and some blue tack. I'm going to demonstrate how to produce two of the more interesting effects. Firstly an arrow, and secondly the waterfall or slit. The arrow effect rather intrigues me because with a fast lens wide open, you can see how a lens's depth of field adjustments work around the in-focus area. This photo is a particularly graphic example of the effect, with the arrows changing direction around the focal point. It looks quite cool and it was a surprise to me when I first saw this. So this is what you need to do to make an arrow similar shape. Draw a line on the card around your chosen filter and cut out the circle. I'm going to use a Helios 44-2 for this demo, and the filter size is 49mm. The circle needs to fit inside the rim of the filter at the front, so after the first cut, you'll need to trim the edges a little more by around 2-3mm. to three millimeters. You don't have to be absolutely precise with the curve of the circle, as there's normally a black inner rim on filters that will cover any imperfect edges. And then you can draw the shape in the center of the circle. To do this, draw a line down the middle of the circle to help center the shape you're going to draw. For an arrow, I'll mark two lines for how long I want the arrow to be, and then draw the arrow. The arrow shouldn't be too big. This kind of size will work well. One tip for cutting out the shape, try to cut out the shape as accurately as possible, using a ruler and a sharp knife, because all the imperfections along the edges are likely to show when you take a photograph. And now you're ready to put the card on the front of the filter. But before attaching it, I screw the filter into the lens, but not all the way, so I can rotate the filter in both directions. Use some blue tack on the outside to secure the card in place, in the position you want. In this case, the arrow is going horizontally across. The blue tack will stop the card falling off while you're walking around. Once in position, you can rotate the filter to the left or right, so the arrow points in different directions, and you can experiment with different angles like this. That's the arrow, and you can do the same thing for squares, or hearts, or stars, indeed any shape you can cut into the card. Some shapes are more complicated than others. I found this star shape quite hard to cut out, and couldn't get the tapered ends to look nice and sharp. This is one of the shapes I ended up getting printed directly onto the filter. As well as the arrows, I rather like the squares. They can add something else to the compositions. I've had fun with square shapes on a Zenitar M50mm f1.7. They recreate the look of the rarer and much more expensive Zenitar ME1, a lens that only has two blades and produces square or diamond-shaped effects. And now onto the slit or waterfall effect. This requires a different approach. I've called it a slit, it's not the most elegant of words, because essentially this is what it is, a thin, narrow slit. The first time I tried this, I cut a rectangular slit in the card itself, something I'd seen other people doing. But then I decided to experiment with different widths, and realised it was a much easier approach without having to recut the card, simply by cutting the circle into two halves. I also reckon that the end result looks better with two distinct halves, rather than a rectangle. To produce the effect, start by cutting a round piece of card to fit on the front of your filter. Trim the circle to a little smaller than the inner diameter of the filter, around a couple of millimetres trimmed off around the edge. This is because the two halves of the circle will be around two millimetres apart. You'll see what I mean when you put the two halves of the card on the filter. Draw a line down the middle of the circle and cut it into two halves. Then put the two halves onto the filter and fix them using blue tack. Make sure there's a clear and even gap running down the middle. And this is where you'll need to experiment around how wide you want the gap to be. I find 2-3mm to three millimeters works well, but you may want to try an even narrower or a wider gap. 
It's easy to move the two halves around using the blue tack technology, but you may have to trim the outer edges a bit to fit a wider gap. Again, you can rotate the filter on the lens to get different angles for the effect. The waterfall images produced by this slit diaphragm are fascinating. It's amazing how little space the lens has to see through, and yet the camera can still take a reasonably sharp photo with the right settings, even if the images lack some contrast. And that's it, really simple. The next challenge is to find the right subjects and compositions and lighting conditions that suit each shape. I'm not going to try to tell you how to do this, but obviously it helps to have a background with a lot of interesting light sources and artefacts. And whatever lens you use, you'll probably have to do quite a lot of contrast and perhaps colour processing to bring out the best in the images. The key point though is to go out and have fun, and have fun experimenting with different kinds of effects and different sizes of shapes and slits. Anyway, I hope the demonstrations I've made here are interesting and helpful. Thank you for watching, and if you haven't already subscribed, please do, and I'll be posting more videos on photographic techniques and more lens reviews.